The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate you growling and prowling with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials down 78, NASDAQ off 19, S&P's off 2, gold contract up $15.70, trading at 1530 an ounce. You got eight, silver up 82 cents, $18.67 an ounce. Light sweet crude, flat, $58.09 a barrel. Notes and bonds, they are on the move once again in a large way. You get the 10-year up 20 ticks, 130.10, 30 30-year up a point and a half, a point and 14 ticks at 162.10. And king dollar, king dollar up 169 ticks, trading 98.305. The euro is at 109. The yen is at 107.41, and the pound is at 124 to 1 U.S. dollar. We get over, we take a look at the S&Ps. What you're going to see out here, folks, is that on Friday, no doubt, you had option expiration. Bottom line, though, guess what? Volume exploded on the way down, and guess what? If it went on the way up, you can make the case that it wants to go up. That's my take on it. You know, price and volume, bottom line, you came down with 97 million shares. You know, we'll see how this is starting to dig into the bottom line, the, the 298 area with 297, 78. And uh, we'll see how this shakes out. We'll see whether we're building some cars. We see we get volume once again on the downside. And when you take a look at the indices, they, they, they really come in with, they come in with some... Uh, it was really end-of-the-day volume, too, right? It, it, it is, yeah. exactly. Uh, 2.8 billion inside the uh, NYSC and then inside the NASDAQ Composite, you're talking about a three handle, 3.3. So you get big numbers there. The um, note and bond market out here this morning, you know, this is going to get really intriguing because it came back to its breakout area of August 1st, rejected lower price, and the first couple of days up, we, re we didn't have volume. You know, it was like, okay, it was tepid. That being said, then you did get volume in this market. Uh, let's put it that way. We will see it. So that, yeah, it, it, well, it accelerated up a bit. It accelerated up a bit on that would have been uh, Wednesday, right? Yeah, Wednesday. Today, we're going to get volume, folks. Yeah. You're at 8, 817,000 contracts right now. You are going into 2 million, but you'll do 2 million today. So bottom line, higher price, lower yield. Um, gold. Gold contract, folks. Uh, you know, my take here is that uh, you not only rejected lower price last week, you rejected coming against your breakout area, and you had tremendously light of volume. We were going into uh, 652,000 contracts. You did 398, and you did 365. We're at 234 today. This is going to do monster contract volume today. So, number one, it looks to me like you're going to 1566. Now, this is the kicker. If you're in this market, this very well can be a very large ABC structure on the way up, you know. Because the, if you take the lows of May, 1286, the highs of, I think it's August, 56, uh, September. Yeah, $280, uh, 1566 from yeah. 1286. You know, you're up there having the gold report. It was 1769 or something. Could that be? would make sense because yeah. you'd add the 280 on top of whatever our low is, right? 1490. Yeah. Um, yeah, so 15, 17, 70. Does that sound about right? Yeah. Somewhere. You know, and so it's a big number. Yeah. And what you have here, this is what you have too, which is really important, is it's amazing. You know, yeah, we, we pull back a bit, but guess what? When you take a look at this retracement, this is like amazing uh, on a strong uptrend move. Yeah, I mean. You did a 23% retracement. That's yeah. it. Yeah, it was quite yeah. a run from yeah. under 13 to 15.66. And the. XAU, the HUI, they did a 38% retracement, you know. So bottom line is that we'll see where this uh, whole baby's going to shake out. You know, today, no doubt, uh, if you get follow through to the downside and you do get volume, you can't expect volume like we got on Friday, that's for sure, you know. Yes, quad, that was quad witching. Yeah, monster, yes. monster day out there. Some of the uh, higher volume equities out here, let's go take a look at these higher, higher volume equities uh, in the market out here today. 
It's just waking up. That's right. We have, uh, let's see, Advanced Micro is uh, up 14 cents. You got Roco down uh, $1.63. They're slamming that baby, man. Doesn't stop. It doesn't. Uh, U.S. Steel is uh, down 12 cents. That's trading at $10.69. The tariffs didn't have, help them whatsoever. Oh, they got hurt bad last week yeah. at one point. Yeah. If you take a look at that, uh, you'll see that, uh, that that's been a one-way trip on the way down. You get Facebook down three bucks. Let's go to the MDX 100 and see, because this the MDX let us down on Friday too. But by the way, folks, uh, and that's you know normally an indication it loves leading you up and leading you down. Lululemon, <laughs> look at this. That's up 2.3%. Uh, you got Ultra Salon up 2%, but that, Athleisure, that's makeup. been down. Yeah, right. Yes, it sure has. Yeah. Micron Tech's up 1%. Now, taken away from it, you get Take Two Interactive down 3.2%. C Trips down 2.9%. INCY is down 2.2%. And you got uh, American Airlines down 2.2%. And in the travel business, you talk oh, about. Oh, man. Isn't that intense? Thomas Cook, right? Let's see if we yeah. can even get an article for some of the statistics. 183 year old company, folks. Yeah. Goes down the tubes. And overnight, they, uh, I guess we wanted our top. Um, overnight, I mean, that's where people, you know, I thought to myself this morning, you better understand, uh, uh, I thought we already clicked Number 14. On it. Oh, no, that's something. That's... No, you got it. Yep. Well, uh, that's going to yeah. be about their hedge fund, I guess. So, okay, we can but, break it down. Yeah. But uh, just that, you know, you, you're entrusting yourself to a company they go bankrupt you know like you get all these people nowadays who say like oh my information's private when i'm on facebook it's like this is a perfect example when like you do business with a company of like right what you trust them with um i bet a lot of people were unaware that they could just be left overseas oh there's no overnight. doubt overnight and so what you had folks i believe it did i say 150,000? yeah 155,000 people it was reported this one 155,000 people Man. were left overseas and uh, the British government, uh, and that's what they said in, in Bloomberg anyway, is they're basically sending jets all over the place yeah, to try to pick them up. Yeah, and they should once that, you know, yeah. I mean, um, I wonder if we can find it by typing Thomas Cook to zoom us in. Either way. Pretty intense. It right? is pretty intense. And man. you can see that's the, I had said to Tommy a little bit earlier, uh, in the 80s, folks, Thomas Cook was the largest travel agency, not just in the UK, in, in the whole world the world. They came into the United States, they bought every travel, every large travel agency, every corporate travel agency, but guess what? Internet came in in 94. Oh, That's why I was actually surprised to hear how many people this affected still, um, but especially I think when you talk about tours, they have those, what is it, the oh, yeah. Perillo tours or whatever it is. Uh, that Perillo's still around. Um, that, so yep. the, the tour companies especially where you incorporate more than just a, yes. an airline flight. Um, so it looks like a lot of people, of course, and just stories in terms of they're packed and ready to go on a plane to the Greek island of Kos, celebrate their wedding, and looks like that got canceled. Oh. So, yeah, 170-year-old company. Yeah, and they are leaving the UK to mount what it said would be the largest peacetime repatriation of hundreds of thousands of stranded travelers. I mean, that, that, that's uh, maybe they'll make a movie about because it is kind of a crisis, man. That that is something else. Oh, wow, yeah. Thank goodness we finally got to the number, man. Look at that. Look at this. 150,000 Britons, along oh. with 350,000 foreign, 350, foreign so nationals are stranded. So a million people are stranded right now, folks. On holidays. Man, that's intense. What a, what a company, man. How they, what were they doing with their costs? They had 500,000 people on current vacations. Right, right. That is a lot they of spent, cash. They spent that cash yeah. on something else, exactly. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Dow's down 86. Nasdaq's off 30. S&P's are off 4. Gold's up 16.60. Silver's up 82 cents. Oil is flat. Coming right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today, and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow, Dow uh, down 56, NASDAQ off 22, S&Ps are off one and a half, and the saga continues with WeWork, folks, okay? Uh, this is gonna get really intriguing. Uh, you know, the CEO still has voting power that he can can the whole board. Yeah, that's where I, I don't understand Go ahead, before we jump in. Yeah, well, as in the board may try and oust him, but from everything I understand, even in the prospectus it said, one of the things listed was that the CEO has the ownership That's and right. voting shares to even oust the board. Right. So I guess it's going to be a game of chicken between SoftBank and Adam. Uh, yeah, Adam Newman, the, yeah. the CEO. Because what does happen is this, is that it seems like everything that we've read, they need the $6 billion. They're not going to get the $6 billion, the credit line, if they don't do this IPO before December. Yeah, you know? because part of it was you're getting the influx of the IPO, and right. you're also getting like $3 billion in a debt offering that right. was contingent but, on them going IPO right. before the end of this right. calendar year. So there's going to be some choices made. Yeah. There, yeah, so there you go. So the boardroom infighting not only imperils the IPO, but also a $6 billion loan. Wow, so it's $6 billion loan, let alone the funds you'd receive from oh, the yeah. IPO on top. Yeah. The unprofitable company must complete a successful stock offering before the end of the year to keep access to the credit facility. And their high yield bond dropped three cents to the dollar. I'm surprised it's just that much, man. I know. Um, because I would not want to be owning some of their debt right now, as they can't even go to public. They conceded right. last week that its plans for going public would have to wait after talks for potential investors lowered expectations for the company's planned IPO to 15 billion or less after the latest round of funding came in at 47 billion from SoftBank. Yeah, I wonder how that's going to play out. How much control does he really have? Uh, we'll find out. There's no doubt. Yeah. I want. I. I hope I remember this. IWT. I think it is. Let me see. In London. Let me try this. IWG. Out. Maybe. Try it. uh, it's another company you're talking about. Yeah. Did you hear the same I heard thing? I'm talking so, about it on Bloomberg today. When it, when it happened, folks, is that there try is IWG. Uh, IWG. IWG. That's going to be LN. Oh, there it is. There. Okay. Let's see what it is. IWG. Let's see if it's in the real estate business. So there's a company in there's a company in London, folks, that um, does the exact same thing. Yeah, this is there it. Okay, go. yeah. Perfect. So check it out. So this company here, folks, 
Let, we'll find out how long it's been around for a while. They, they do the exact same thing. They own and provide private office space, okay? Well, um, you say they do the exact same thing. Newman would disagree. Oh, for sure. Oh, for <laughs> yeah. sure. There's, there's no doubt about that. Um, so this trades at, well, look at that. That even trades at a 40 PE. It does. That's pretty intense. It sure is. I agree. Yeah. Their revenue, they got 9,600 employees. Their revenue is 2.7 billion. Okay. And, and they this, make money. Yeah. And they're growing. Yep. Um, now, that being said, the, the correlation between this company, what it's valued at, versus... And we're talking about the multiples, how you value that, it. That, as in, this that, is valued as a real estate company. Right. WeWork wants to be valued as a technology company. They definitely were valued as a technology company at $47 billion from SoftBank. So right. SoftBank's saying you got to value them as a technology company, I'm sure, as well. And the market was like... No, especially not with this type of governance. It's not happening. Right. And what did the person say that was saying this morning? If they mark to mark themselves down to a valuation Way to hear this, similar folks. with IWG, yeah. would it be 95 cents on the dollar or 99? 90. 90 cents on the dollar. 90? I thought it was it's even 10 higher. 10 cents. I thought it was That's even it. higher. Five so or 10 pennies, yeah. They're, they're saying that if, this, if WeWork had the same valuation as this company, you know, which the company's making money, yeah. you'd have to knock 90% off the valuation of uh, WeWork. Yeah. So... Either it's, way, I swear, I think it was 95. Either way, it's 10 yeah. or 20 times. So we, at oh, 10 yeah. times valuation, you'd be 4.7 billion from the 47, yep. right? <laughs> and at at a one, at a 95 percent loss, it'd be about two to two and a half billion dollars. You, you know what's so crazy about that is that this is where the aspect of uh, that CEO was really smart, and because he sold a huge amount of shares, you know, and it's in the private market. Yes. And so, at a much higher at value. One of the previous IPOs, yes, right? No, 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 not just I, otherwise. Uh, yeah, okay. that, at, on a private uh, deal. Uh, yeah, yeah. Fun, funding rounds, exactly. Yeah, he sold one of those IPO exactly. rounds. Yeah. He, he sold into those rounds. Yeah, and he so, got preferential price that other people didn't get, and it was disclosed later. I yeah, heard about it. There's, there's, there's about 15 red flags in this oh, one, which is why the market said, "Hold on." A you second. know, it's going to be amazing if this is like a real implosion. I mean, which it. And you, you know, know what happens is that you know, if you're a company like Facebook. I mean, Zuckerberg did a similar thing with his share structure, right? but the company obviously had promised, and so investors were willing to forego yes. complete control from one person right. knowing that they needed to own Facebook. And there's not another Facebook. And, and that's right. not happening with this company. Right. That's the deal. Yeah. If, if, in fact, it's a real estate company. So just to go over what they do, folks, okay, what happens is that you take, let's just say, 100 square feet. They're taking 100 square feet, and they're saying that even when folks had been in this business before, they would say that, okay, we'll give each one, let's say, 25 square feet. Okay. okay. What he's done is that he has brought it down to like 10 square feet, okay? But that's not his sell. What his sell is, is that this is a total change of lifestyle. Yes. You know, that you have a kitchen, you and me together, you know, you're a smart guy, I think I'm a smart guy, we get Excuse ideas me. together, you know, you go out together, you drink beer, you, the, he has put this whole sure. thing, you know, inside yeah. of uh, a That's package. a space you go use occasionally for business, for right. meetings, let right. alone renting your own monthly right. office. Right. And now what gets intriguing here is that the uh, there's a couple uh, well, it's the uh, oh, yeah Rosengard uh, from Boston the the Fed president from Boston came out with a statement last week that he thinks that if in fact this thing does get an IPO that the Fed has to really start watching them because of the fact that he thinks it could be in a recession he thinks that it could hit commercial landlords in an incredible way. I'm sure. You know, you be, talk about because it. they've got so big right. and they have so many leases with commercial landlords that, you, you know, should, if you, you can't let companies get too big to fail. We right. saw the error. Because and then there's all well, this. Well, look at Thomas Cook. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not, I'm just saying no, no, that I, you, yeah, yeah. big companies can fail. Oh, yes. Um, oh, man. You know, talk so about financial the, so, companies too, yep. with land so, lease companies. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So the bottom line is that if that failed, then you have commercial landlords fail, then how do you fill the space? Yeah. Anyway, and I think there'd be a lot of pressure to bail them out because they're too big. So you just don't let companies get there because they could definitely affect the whole market if you saw every single office space be underwater. Oh, no, totally. Um, totally. Yeah. And then imagine you have all these entrepreneurs inside the space, excuse me, and yeah. they get locked out. Yes, very, <laughs> very good point. Because you're talking about billions, of pin, billions upon billions of oh, yeah. leases. Yeah. So, yeah. Scary, big scary big scary dollars. Stuff. Big dollars. Let's go take a look at the platinum market. So, PLV, PLV9. Let's see what we have happening out here. And then we'll go to silver. Silver's got quite a bit out yeah. here this morning. That metal market. Yeah. 
So this is big contract volume even for Platinum. You know, it's 20,000. That doesn't seem like a lot, but Platinum doesn't trade a lot, folks. So that's, that's, a, that's a decent little deal. Yeah, I mean, Friday we did 24,000. This thing's gonna go after its highs, which is a thousand bucks. You're at 960. Silver, which is just a psycho market, man. <laughs> this, huge run on silver, it, man. It, it is like, oh. Plus 78 cents today. Look at that. Seriously. 87,000 contracts, too. This is a nice move, I mean, man. let alone that we were just at 1450 in May. Yep. And the high is 1975. Okay. And what's cool here, folks, is this. Silver, gold, XAU, HUI, they're all set up the same way. This very well could be a large ABC up, too. You put these on weeklies, you're going to see that on weeklies, it doesn't even look like they, you know... It's like, wow. Two bar pullback. Seriously. They, really know. a one bar pullback. Right. I know. Yeah. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. We're kicking into the end of September, and folks, it's gorgeous down here today. We got, cool we got a Finally. cool spell in. Yeah. Dow. Dow is down 52. NASDAQ's off 13. S&P's a flat. We're coming right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today, and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Beyond Meat. Uh, let's see where this baby's going to go. So you get, uh, it looks like it's 
fallen of 4.4% we'll today. We'll the chart in a moment. Yeah. We'll see where it is. But. Um, you have uh, an analyst coming out here saying that the uh, analyst citing the high stock valuation and low barriers to entry. They, and We've talked about it, right? Huge. Yeah. And but, it's not but, rocket science, folks. No. In, you don't need a, a master's degree in business to understand that you're getting a valuation kind right. of like Tyson meat. Go ahead. And, yeah. and what you have there, Look, which he yeah. has down there, you know, the largest grocery store in the United States, folks, is Kroger. And Kroger has already told everyone that they're coming out with their own deal. You know, and they do business right now with uh, Beyond Meat. So guess what? It's only sure. going to be a matter of, you know, I don't know if it's yeah. four months, six months, that, hey, guess what? That thing's going to be south. And I would say, I don't know, Walmart's grocery, though, may be bigger than that, even, in or Target or something like that. And they're all going to have their own brand. And Tyson's going to have their own brand next to Beyond Meat, right. next to the right. Kroger brand in every store. And we've done it before, but let's do it again, man, in terms oh. of revenue, valuation versus yeah. Tyson, when guess what? Tyson's still going to be selling plenty of chicken, man. They're going to oh, be selling yeah. plenty of, even you know, in the refrigerator they have section, they have cooked chicken, they get chicken in the freezer, they have the supply chain, they have the trucks that show up there every day already. So Beyond Meat's worth $9 billion, perfect. And they're pulling in, let's even go to 2020, why not? Because we'll give okay. them some credit. They're pulling in $400 million and they're worth $9 billion, right? And what is Tyson? <laughs> T-Y-S-N, maybe? Yeah, no, I think it's T-Y-N. T-Y-N. Thank you. T-S-N. There we go. Yeah. So $9 billion for $400 million of equity of uh, revenue in 2020. And Tyson is worth $31 billion, so just over three times the company that Beyond Meat is. That must drive the people at Tyson. <laughs> <laughs> and their revenue, drum roll please, 2020, 45 billion dollars, 100 times the revenue, more than, right? 400 billion. Uh, excuse me, 400, 400 million. Yes. Right. So that's 100 times the revenue, for three times the market cap. Uh, six dollars, six dollars and seventy-seven cents, times 300 million. Let's say, right? Sorry, oh what's the six? They, they they're going to make 677 next year for the year. Six dollars and seventy-seven cents. So okay. we, we just took it times the float of the stock. Sure. What is that? That's yeah. That's one point eight billion. Yeah. Yeah. Two billion. But they're making to the right. bottom line. Yeah. Just market cap alone, though. I mean, you look at it, you know. Do you want to own a company that's worth thirty billion dollars that takes in forty billion dollars a year, or do you want to own a company that's worth ten billion dollars that takes in? Let's just call it almost zero because you're not buying four hundred million in revenue. You're buying right. much bigger numbers. And you always hear about it. If you walk Shark Tank, right? What do the guys on Shark Tank say? Kevin O'Leary, right? He's like, I can do this tomorrow with, like, nothing. Right. Why would I buy your company? I right. feel like that's what they should keep saying to Beyond Meat. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, as you just said, Tyson's one of the largest meat companies in the world. And yeah. they're going to have it. Of course they are. <laughs> so it's like, okay. And know. they're going to have it. I mean, they could be a lost leader. That's where you, you yeah. know, and Amazon's going to have a brand. And Kroger is, like you said. They're not going to have to make money on the plant-based meat of their, as no. long as everybody keeps buying chicken and, you know, what they say about the market is those types of burgers aren't going to re replace meat necessarily. They're just going to be an addition. Right. You know, it's not going to be a, a, a negative sum game. You know, you're not taking away necessarily. It's just going to be something that people then eat maybe in addition to sometimes meat. Let's go take a look at the dollar index out here. So the first... I'm going to pull up the index first and show you something here because I'm going to start using this DXY more than the dollar index. And so that it would make sense. The dollar index is the future, right? I mean, we're, we're dealing with the December future. Yes. Um, you know, and the battle on the, the future has been over this 98.225. So we're at 98.280, right? Now, when I take a look at the actual cash index, which doesn't trade, by the way, but it gets settled in cash. If, we, if we're doing business, okay, the bottom line into currencies on a day-by-day -day basis, not in the future, you are doing business at a cash basis. And the cash hasn't been able to handle this 98,932. So it's going to be really, I'm going to watch this for a month or two and, and see what the correlations are. Do you know what I mean? But it's, it's, it's really intriguing because I remember when I stopped using Tim, Tim Ord and my, we're going back 25 years now. I had said to him one day, I said, man, I'm telling you, I think we got to start using just the SPX cash versus the future. And the reason was that the future, you know, you're from Goldman, they're from Morgan Stanley, whatever it is. They can jam that 
wherever they want because they're such large players, right? Sure. What happens with the cash market, and the same with this, is that the way the cash market gets established is on the SPX, is that every stock in the S&P has to trade, and then it closes, and that's the actual number of the S&P. Sure. And the same is applicable on the dollar index spot currency. They take the aspect when these currencies might close. What did this close at? What did this close at? What did this close at? That is the cash market. That's what it actually, you know, so it's kind of, it's intriguing. And sure. it doesn't trade also, sure. okay? But it, it is, uh, when you're talking actually a real number, well, that is the real number. That's the real number if we're doing business today. Not, in this particular case, that's doing business on December 19th or whatever the third. The future is, yes. Yeah, whatever the third uh, Friday is. And, uh, you know, so yeah. it's, and it's a close call. You know what I mean? Because when you see one, the, the, the dollar cash index right now is under that level. And it's certainly not, it has to go a lot lower, you know, because it's just under one small level, not, not the larger level. But. Can we jump to Tesla? So did you hear Larry Ellison of Oracle and what he had to say about Tesla this weekend? No. He said something to, we'll have to get the quote, that uh, I could have had a monkey, um, no, excuse me, Uber, not Tesla, uh, Uber, Uber, that I, uh, poor Tesla, they get enough bad credit and press, um, that he could have had a monkey program the app Uber, and same type of thing, what do they really have that is so worth the valuation that they came in at? And it makes a lot of sense when you think about, you know, the similar, why not Lyft, why not, and that's why Tesla, I think, was all right, and Tesla's going to have their own fleet of self-driving cars where does uber fit in besides just being the the first to market biggest one but that's tough when you have with the middleman with volvo, an app volvo is right. going to have who knows you know i mean yeah. all these car companies there's no reason why a ford doesn't have their own self-driving app at some point he didn't elaborate on this but i uh, i cracked up a bit because yeah. it's something you want to consider when you talk about companies that are making no money plowing through cash you know and uh, and and this is another one of SoftBanks. Both of them. I think they were both of them. SoftBank. Yeah. Bank. yeah. yeah. Meaning that they're to WeWork and Lyft. I thought it was Uber as well. No. No. Maybe. I think it was be. Uber oh, as well. Might, I think because it came be. out, they just they believed in the be. whole sector and they yeah. thought there was room for both of them, and they yeah. didn't really want to pick a horse because you might be wrong on the horse, yeah. but you know that they're going to be around. Right. And even that looks. I mean, they're going to be around. But maybe the valuation is just a little bit and, pricey. And, well, you know, what, what, what we're going to start hearing here pretty soon, folks, is that all these unicorns, we heard plenty about it the last two years, that this is the new deal, unicorn out there, do you know what I mean? Just go private until, you know, you can sell them a sliver of 10%. Uh, but, you know, in this case here, you we'll have to pull lift, up. What lift. is Rakuten on Lyft? Is that them? That, that could be SoftBank. Somebody owns 11%. Yeah, so and, that's, uh, uh, and that's in Japan. That could be. I that, think that, that, that is. That, that, yep, exactly. Yeah. Yep. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. 
Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. And uh, Facebook is getting a little more heat here. They uh, sure are. And the heat's actually coming from inside Facebook as well as uh, a lot of the folks that uh, sold to Facebook. Yeah, and uh, all their competitors that they were trying to squash the whole time. Man. Right. This one talks a little bit about Snapchat in terms of... So Facebook, for the most part, uh, past decade, they're the big one in the room, ripping off their best ideas or buying them outright as it cemented its dominance on social media. So a number of their current and former competitors are talking about the company's hardball tactics to the investigators at the FTC as part of its broader antitrust investigation. And they get in there, one of them is Snap, where a legal team for years kept a dossier of the ways Facebook was trying to thwart competition from the buzzy upstart, according to people familiar with the matter. The title of the, of the documents, Project Voldemort. That is a reference to a Harry Potter character out there who is evil, I believe, including discouraging popular account holders or influencers from referencing Snap on their Instagram. They also suspected Instagram was preventing Snap content from trending on its app. In recent months, the FT FTC has made contact with dozens of tech executives and app developers, people familiar with the outreach said, and uh, they're also taking a look uh, and talking to executives from startups that became defunct after losing access to Facebook's platform. Yeah, in addition to founders who sold their companies to Facebook. And I said, you right, yeah. to come on. They probably had to, right? It was one of these right. situations where you said, we're going to buy you. You better sell to us or we're going to beat you anyway. So the discussions have focused on the growth at all cost tactics that propelled Facebook from basically nothing to one of the biggest companies in the world. And they, uh, it'll be interesting to see, man, because in terms of, uh, and the article's a long one. I wish we could, yeah. you know, if you're out there, folks, check it out. I'm sure you can find it outside of the Bloomberg. But it talks about it as well in terms of allowing access for apps, the Israeli company they were just got into in terms of allowing privacy, growth at all costs. Yeah. And, you know, when you bring this up, I mean, it's down a couple bucks today, but, you know. This is a perfect example of if the market thinks they're going to keep making money, just right. kind of like we talked about the corporate governance deal. The right. market doesn't care about corporate governance if right. Mark Zuckerberg just keeps printing cash. Right. So your all-time high is 218. You're at 185. You know, yeah, you, you, in December we got down to the 123, but guess yeah, what? That was at the height, right, of yeah, that's, uh, that's, the, the privacy concern yes. battle, which in all fairness, really, I mean, they paid the fine, right? That's probably the $4 yeah. billion or something, so that's, that's some, money. some of the reprieve. Right. But, yeah, I, I, I see them continually having problems the way they abuse people's privacy. They do. And now it seems that, I mean, they got... Instagram is the other, right? I mean, they Instagram's, own Instagram. get, the Instagram's getting some good traction, they right? They sure do. Yeah. And, um, yeah. and, of course, they have WhatsApp, which is huge in oh, Europe as right. well. Right. So they're going nowhere. Right. Yeah. Yeah. 877-927-6648. Let's see where Amazon's going. Oh, so on, um, was it Amazon? Let's see. What are you not, watching? No, I think it's Sorry. Google. No, it's Google. This was uh, last week I was talking about, I believe it's going to be 
No, it's Amazon. Is that Amazon? Oh, oh. It might be Amazon and Google. Bottom line is that they're, I believe it's one of them that actually have got the licenses now. So to do, uh, what are the the robots, the, the planes? The drones? The drones. Okay. Real delivery with the drones. Okay. And speeding up delivery. Okay. Okay. Now, it's going to be, in, it's in Charlottesville, West Virginia. So it isn't a, you know, a rural community. You know? Okay. So, you know, they, they showed a picture of, you know, a drone coming over the plane, uh, the house. But they were saying that, listen, this, this is, I can't, I can't wait to see how they, they're going to, like, pull this thing off. Um, they, they're talking about doing hundreds of these deliveries a day, you know? Uh, Drones don't get tired. They just need gas, no, right? I know. <laughs> it's just so wild, man. And of course, so much news. We'll have to yeah. find it. But, yeah, I mean, I mean, if if there's going to be a company out there doing it, um, yeah, I'd say so. Right. As and in it would be Amazon yeah. leading the way in that. So, yeah. Pretty wild. And we'll have to pull up the article, yeah. And let's go over to Google. So Google, no doubt, is in the crosshairs of the FTC also. Um, and look at this. This is not bothering Google. I mean... 1230 trading at right at its highs, oh, yeah. man. Highs in Google, lucky. Well, they could yeah. be under some press. 1289. From uh, stress from regulators as well, man, because they basically that. own the search. And when you combine Google with YouTube, which is theirs, I mean, there's right. always like Facebook has Instagram, they have WhatsApp. Google right. has YouTube. Amazon, they have Twitch, they have Amazon Web Service, uh, they have Prime, they have, you know, all that stuff. So they're, they're all multifaceted. And then uh, what we haven't seen yet is, uh, remember we were talking about the, uh, was it Walmart that's coming out with the quick delivery service that's less expensive than Amazon? Amazon hasn't come down yet. So that's with the groceries, yeah. Yeah. Not just yet, but right. I think it was $98 for yeah. the year right. for uh, right. grocery delivery. Right. Now, I wonder, I had heard, I wonder what the prices are. Is it the same price of the groceries we'll to get when they're delivered? It might be different. You know, I, 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 as know you get into it, it's I, $98, but... When you're buying a box of cereal, it's three seventy nine instead of three forty nine or something. With I wonder. Yeah. There'll be a quick way. Somebody's gonna, you know, oh, yeah. publish that and sort. But yeah, and Amazon's to the contrary is one hundred and seventy eight dollars, I think. Plus you have plus to be prime. a Prime member, so plus it's really two seventy eight when right. you're all in. And then that won't you're still gonna be you're getting. I believe you're getting most of those from uh, Whole Foods. Okay. You know? And you know it is interesting, it though, sense, yeah. since Amazon has taken over Whole Foods, you don't hear whole paychecks anymore. Now, I haven't been to Whole Foods, but I bet it's still expensive. I bet it you is, know? yeah. But uh, different, different ballgame. For sure. So, uh, overseas, folks, you get the overseas markets. Uh, DAX is pulling back, you know, bottom line. I, I don't get this volume to this afternoon. Germany had a big number, man. Maybe yeah. if we could just hit the news after yeah. this, um, because they had a, a huge um, decrease in the growth. Uh, I think they had a they did. PMI, they did. was it, uh, like 41 point something. Uh, which slowest growth in like 10 years? Yeah, I'm not sure what. We'll Let's have to pull see. it up. I, it was it was a tough in terms of uh, economic indicator number this morning, and you also had South Korea with a huge drawback on their manufacturing down like something right. like 22 percent year on Big year. Big numbers, yeah. And that's they have they have some problems going on with their uh, trade deals with Japan, South Korea, so that could be hitting it. But big numbers. Yeah. And, you know, overseas, uh, well, in Asia last night, bottom line, they came down uh, with some juice, too. So we'll see how this uh, shakes out, uh, you know, coming into the close out here. But it looks to me like you get a little turn here. You know, one point in the S&P is nothing. There's no, no doubt and especially that. when you look at note and bond, strength in the dollar, yep. big pop in gold. Yeah, what's it all mean? Together, right? Helicopter money. That's the next thing, folks. Uh, the, did you see any of those articles yet? Helicopter? No, I didn't. So... Modern monetary policy. That's the yeah, new MMT, right? M that, Modern uh, theory, I think. Yeah, theory. Thank you. That's the new thing. And so the helicopter money is back in play again. Helicopter money, folks. <laughs> I don't see it happening. But the bottom line is that the there's a there's a certain amount of folks out there that are saying that the Fed can't. Uh, they run out of tools, meaning all central banks, not just our yes. Fed. And helicopter money is the next thing that they're going to have to do uh, in order to basically put some juice behind economy. And is that stimulus from basically the government in terms of programs? Is that what that speaks to? I, I, it's... I think it, it might... It, they're saying it's a combination. Okay. That's right. It, and it, I think the one thing it hinges on, though, is that we're so low on interest rates that bringing down interest rates is no longer a tool, a useful tool right. to provide the stimulus you thought it was. So it's going to have to be type of fiscal stimulus of... Yeah, of, 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 
to put money into programs because, I mean, uh, you know, are you really holding out to build that factory to go from a half a percent to a quarter percent? No, you're probably no. building it at a half if right. you really want to. Dow, Dow down 46, NASDAQ up 16, S&P's flat. We'll come right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as a number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We found that helicopter. We found so it indeed, man. The, the top of this article says the long despised and risky economic doctrine is now a hot idea. Hot helicopter potato. money on the horizon as Dalio and Fisher draw up plans. Man. So, yeah, so the basic premise, man, as we wrap up the show, we got a couple minutes, is that like we're talking about, that basically rates are so low, that type of policy is not going to have the stimulus you used to. And so we got down to some of the specifics, right, yes. what this talking about. So... Deflation is a big threat. An emerging consensus says the next downturn may need to be fought with direct and permanent injections of cash, often called helicopter money, and that central banks can't deliver it alone. The basic premise is you don't, it's not a loan. You don't have to repay it because we're already at maximum people taking out debt because rates are so low. They're pushing it down any lower. You're not going to stimulate more people to take out more debt. They can encourage private sectors to spend or invest, making it cheaper to borrow. By historical standards, though, interest rates are near rock bottom already, and the credit cards of households and businesses are pretty maxed out in the low rates era. It's mostly been governments doing the borrowing. And we got the resurfacing of the old idea of monetary policy sometimes pushing on a string. You have Larry Summers out there. We've got to think much harder for economic 
stabilization, about me mechanics that involve spurring direct demand. If we thought negative rates were hard to wrap your head around, how about they just give you money to spend? Yeah, I mean, that's where, you know, when we were losing a million jobs a month when yeah. Obama came in, you right. got that big stimulus, man. You got, right. you know, you could cash for clunkers, right? You got that's, all these different right. deals. Yeah. That's what this is talking about, those right. types of deals to, to spur the economy, whether it's spending money directly on government jobs, government programs, yeah. government stimulus. Well, good. We need some infrastructure. Let's, yeah, let's that would be a there. huge one, That man. would be great. That would yeah. be a huge one. And, and so the basic takeaway that I got, man, this is what they say, they've run out of room, okay? That's how much easing took place from 2007 to 2009. Was that five points? This yeah. one's, we only got two points to go. That's it, we're at 2%. Where do we go? Yeah. We'll find out. Stay right there, folks. We got um, uh, TD Ameritrade Think of Swim coming up next. Then I'm Mr. Basil's Chapman, Steve Rhodes, Dave White. I'll be back this afternoon. Thanks, pal. Thanks, man. Oh, go get him, folks.